Code 1, Civil Priority. Isolation now in effect. To avoid the risk of contamination, please stay indoors and await further instructions. Well, hello to everyone in Tribe World. Um, I hope you're all keeping well and staying strong and above all staying safe and keeping your dream alive. And here we go for another um, another interview uh, with um, a very iconic uh, character and uh, uh, in the in the form of uh, uh, Amber, who is the leader of the Mall Rats. And I'm joined by by Beth Allen. So. Thank you, Beth, for taking the time to have a chat. And how are you? Lovely to be here. We are good. We are into day five of our four-week countrywide lockdown. So yeah, we're, it's all very strange. Our streets are absolutely deserted, and it's um, you know there's lots of people out walking the dog and getting exercise and out with their bikes, but there's no traffic. Um, everyone's either working from home or had to stop work. And my husband is working from home and we're at home with our kids and so it feels very peaceful and quiet but also um, a bit strange and I know lots of people are kind of apprehensive about how long it goes on for because we've been told to lock down for four weeks but they think that it might go on a bit longer and yeah so there's a lot of unknowns and we're just taking it one day at a time. And who would have thought Beth all those years ago when we started on the tribe that we're almost living an episode now aren't we? That's exactly right My, um, we're not seeing any old people right now Ray because they're all no. being able to really stay home because the um, the COVID-19 virus is you know as everyone knows is very um, dangerous for older people so yeah, there is an awful lot of uh, young people out on the streets and not many old people. <laughs> I look at myself in the mirror and I think, where the hell is that? I mean, uh, uh, someone was saying earlier that I look a bit like uh, Keith Richards out of the Rolling Stones and I'm no longer <laughs> no longer Peter Pan. But I keep saying, yeah, I've got to look out for these old people. But I mean, I'm, I'm still the youngest teenager in town. And uh, so, Beth, right. you're, um, you're in Auckland, obviously, in New Zealand and... And I'm here in yes. Australia, but what are you doing in the days to, to keep occupied and get through and, and with the kids and that? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's funny. My kids are really little. Um, I've got an almost four-year-old son and an almost two-year-old daughter. And I we actually have another one on the way. I'm seven months oh, pregnant with her. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. 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 So actually, I'm... to be honest, not much has changed for us, except my boy doesn't go to kindy down the road. He doesn't go and do a bit of kindergarten. Um, but actually the kids are kind of loving it because we are just at home and we are kind of doing whatever they want to do and they're getting a bit more um, time watching cartoons than they normally oh, would. And that's Sid and uh, Nell, isn't it? Yep, yep. Um, so it's it's not much has changed for me. My husband's working from home and he ran out and kind of went to Kmart and got all this like crafting stuff that we thought the kids would be into. but. Actually, they kind of just want to have tea parties with us and um, we go for walks around the neighborhood. They're, they're doing this lovely thing over here where people are putting teddy bears in their windows so that all the kids who are out walking can spot the teddy bears. I love teddy bears. So, so you got bears in the windows. And what, what happens with, how does that work then? We just, um, well, because we're allowed to go on, basically the only activity we're allowed to do outside of the house is go for walks. So. I saw a great thing online the other day about um, I can now finally understand why dogs are so excited to go for walks because it's the only <laughs> thing you get to do. No, so no, we no. just um, put the kids in the pram or on the bikes or whatever and um, we just literally walk around our streets and most people have just popped a little teddy bear or three or ten um, in their windows and the kids just spot them. So they just, and my <laughs> son who's um, independently minded tells me that I'm not allowed to spot them, that he has to spot them by himself. So. Oh, yeah. um, he, he, yeah, so it's sort of just something to keep them a little bit occupied no, and no. we've kind of just been exploring our streets really and we and you always end up seeing someone on the street that you know and you have a chat from a two metre si socially isolated distance. Well that's terrific, the, the one thing you were saying that uh, your husband, that's Charlie isn't it, that um, he's, yes. he's out yeah. at the shops and I'm just wondering if I could do a deal, if he could get me some toilet paper. You know, because I'm, we've run out of it over here. What's that? Do you have many of much available in New Zealand? I heard this thing the other day. Someone actually interviewed a, I can't remember if it was an epidemiologist or, no, it was, I think it was a psychi psych psychologist. And they said, the interviewer said, why toilet paper? And they said, when, when we're freaking out about what's going to happen, we try to control the minor things. And so we go out and we go shopping because we're used to going shopping. And we think that that's going to sort of alleviate the anxiety. And Toilet paper is for some reason a thing that everyone's attached themselves to. We've actually had like lots of um, 
sort of media conferences from the Prime Minister and other people and like reiterating over and over again that there is enough food in New Zealand and there is enough toilet paper and no one needs to go and stockpile ah. and right. everyone just needs to calm down. Yeah, I've got this vision of myself wrapping like the invisible man wrapping myself in toilet paper to, <laughs> so that those nasty germs don't get anywhere near me, you know, but... Um, but just got to wash your hands, Ray. Do you know that? I'm, I'm, again, I'm a bit of a germaphobe at the best of times, a bit of a hypochondriac. My wife is saying, my God, I thought man flu was bad. I mean, this, this COVID-19, so I'm just, um, and so they're saying to exercise. So, you know, I'm making, I've got uh, a lot of wines. So I'm, uh, my, my right arm is very yeah. healthy. Looking drinking. great. Yes. And are you exercising, Beth? Do you work out at all? Oh, I, I normally would be, but I'm sort of at the stage of my pregnancy where it's all just feeling a oh. bit hard. And so, um, and I can't drink. So, no. yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's no, not the greatest it? time to be pregnant. No, that, and so, Beth, you, um, you know, we, we've been uh, in touch on a regular basis and you spent some time in the States, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We actually were, we were due to go, we were due to spend more time in the States. I left New Zealand sort of five and a half, six years ago. Um, so I left, I finished on Shortland Street and um, we were going to go and live in New York, but then on the way, it was supposed to be just on the way, we took a interactive immersive zombie apocalypse show to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival um, and it went bananas and we ended up um, taking it to London and we did um, a big season of it in London. And so we had a year there and then um, then we went to New York and so we were there for, we were all, you know, had our green cards ready to go and kind of start our New York life. Yeah. And then I got pregnant with my son. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, so we just sort of decided that um, New York is just not really where we could see ourselves having children. So we kind of just decided to come home straight away, really. So we lasted, I think, our, our journey to New York took about three years. And when we were there, we were there for about seven weeks. And yeah. then we came home. And, no, and had our family because I, yeah, I didn't really want to be, I didn't really want to be living in a little apartment with a little baby away from everyone. I kind of, I wanted to be near my family and, yes. um, so yeah. So we've been home for how long has it been now? Four and a half years. We've been home. Wow. Um, wow. yeah, and I've been at home. I've been at home with my kids. I've been, I've been doing it. I've done a little bit of work and a little bit of volunteering and stuff, but mostly we just made the call that I would be at home with the kids. Um, yeah. and my husband's been Charlie's been busy beavering away at various ventures and he's in a he's in a um really interesting kind of software business at the moment that's um yeah gonna do some really interesting things i think so no, yeah so we're kind of living a very very domestic mid-30s life i mean on the acting side you're still obviously with being a mum that's uh I think that's the most well, important. I keep yeah. getting pregnant and having babies, which doesn't, um, which sort of precludes me from a lot of work. <laughs> You're like, you know, a good boxer. I'm a big boxing fan. And a boxer never loses his punch. And an actress with your talent, you're never going to lose your talent. It's always oh. going to be. And, <laughs> like uh, riding a bike. <laughs> some of the background, some of the listeners, I mean, I've had the pleasure and privilege of uh, knowing you or, or uh, working with you for. I'm about to be 36. So. 23 yeah. years this year, eh? We've known each other. That's amazing. And uh, so go, and that went way back to Princess Vara in the legend of William Tell. And I was saying to Adam, Adam remembered the day you came in to have a chat about it. And I think, weren't you with your sister, your older sister? I might have been. I remember, because I remember when I flew... I flew from Auckland to Wellington to have a chat to you guys about it, and I, really? I, may, I don't know, I don't know, I don't actually know why we did that. Did you just want to get a feel for? Yeah, it was really to. Um, um, it was quite interesting because, and you'll appreciate it being a mum now. You know, if Sid was, I mean, in a few years from now, if he was going to go from uh, to a different city, you know, we were very keen. Uh, you know, because the, the role of Princess Vara was very important, and um, yeah. and you were perfect. I mean, you. You certainly had the talent in that, but it was really to see how it would be, you know, living away from home. And, and you had a wonderful um, spirit, I always remember, even as a, a young girl, you know, and uh, and a little segue into Amber in a minute. But um, And how, how did you find doing Vara, Princess Vara? Did you enjoy oh, that? I, I absolutely loved it. I mean, I, I think I was a reasonably independent kid, and so I don't remember, I don't even remember it ever being, like a question in my mind that I would move out of home at 12 and go and, <laughs> go 
film go into a TV series for six months. And I had a wonderful time. Um, you know, I you know, I had Katrina Brown, who was obviously, you know, played um oh god, what was her name? Aruna. Aruna. Um and she was like a big sister to me, and there were various other women on the on the crew who were so kind and you know, and looked after me. And then we had lovely Heidi and who was looking after me in the house. Um, so I just had a blast. Like I just, you know, got to go and play on set and had all these wonderful adults who were so kind to me. And we, you know, I got to wear excellent clothes and have a great, great time. And I just loved it. So I kind of, um, and I kind of looking back on it, I didn't, you know, you don't really register these things when you're 12 and 13, but it was such an extraordinary experience for a you know, 12 year old, 13 year old to have. And I actually read later, something later that the skills that you learn at that age, at sort of 10, 11, 12, really stay with you. And I think like having all that time on a TV set and amongst a film crew and just doing that over and over again, it stood me in such good stead for later. I just, even now, even if I haven't been on set for a really long time, I can walk onto a set and you know, it, I'm, I'm rusty, but I kind of get it all. You know, I know about where I need to stand and what the cameras are doing and what the guy, you know, it just, yes, it's just, yes. it's just kind of like built into me now. So the opportunity, the opportunity was absolutely brilliant. And I made lifelong friends, you know, I'm still um, regularly in touch with Katrina and um, she's the main one actually. But, you know, if I still, if I bumped into anyone in the street, we would, you know, have a, have a really nice chat. So it was, it was fantastic. I loved it. With six degrees of separation, Katrina was up in the Gold Coast where I'm currently uh, oh, about three weeks ago. Yes, and it's on a just junk it. Yeah, and she's doing that flight because, I mean, she, um, uh, uh, obviously, in addition to Aruna, she was a Power Ranger. And yes. weren't you a Power Ranger, Beth? I was always a Power Ranger girlfriend. I yeah. got quite close to the um, Power Rangers, but I, I actually, weirdly, I played... Dwayne Cameron's, who Dwayne played a Silver Ranger in one of the series, and I was his long lost girlfriend in one series mm -hmm. of that. So that was amazing. that was very strange. Dwayne and I looking at each other, going, "Oh, hello." <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? That it's, it's a small world, and, and Beth, coming back to you as a, a young girl, had you always had the acting bug? Did you? And if so, where did you get it from? No, um, no, I sort of a bit when I was about ten or eleven, I went to a little acting class with a cousin of mine, and really enjoyed it and decided I wanted to do more of it. And we were actually um, with old family friends with a quite well-known film director here, a guy called Ian Mune, um, oh. who just put me in touch with an agent. And so I, I think there weren't a lot of us around doing it at the time, Ray. Like I think yeah. it was me and kind of Rose McIver and a few other people who were a few other kids who were child actors. But in terms of, I, I don't know that we just, I just seemed to pick up work quite quickly um, yeah. There didn't seem to be the kind of industry around it that there is now in terms of lots of theatre groups and, or maybe yeah. I just wasn't tuned into it. Um, so I was like 10 or I was 11 when I got my first agent and then pretty much immediately started getting, you know, bits and pieces. And then I'd only been working for a year or even maybe a year when I, um, when I got uh, William Tell. It was 18 months, I think, I'd been kind of doing stuff professionally. Yeah, um, yeah. and then... All of it. I mean, yeah. Now and then we move. I moved to Wellington, and then and then started on that journey with you guys, which lasted, God, seven years. Yeah, yeah I was. I think I was nineteen when we finished the tribe. So yeah, seven years. That's amazing. And then um, and then following William Tell, you uh, gave a wonderful performance in the Green Dress in William Shatner's *The Twist and the That's Tale*. Right. Right. Did you work with William? Did you meet him? Or no, I think we you'd shot all your stuff with him before because yeah. I think you did like two or three weeks with him. Right. Before we ask, and then and then you'd sort of inserted us into um into the footage with him. So no, I didn't get to meet him. I would have loved to. Yeah, he was a tremendous guy, actually. And we've had a couple of questions. I mean, um, and I mean, I'm being very greedy here, asking you all the questions. I'm we've That's we've right. been inundated, Beth, with uh, questions from uh, Twitter and Instagram and yeah. and, uh, and you and uh, our Facebook page. And so I'll get to that in a minute. But I'm being a bit selfish and. You know, just intrigued. You know, I love to have a chat with you and catch up. And and um, and then for, you know, after that, I mean, it's interesting. A lot of fans. I mean, you were. I mean, uh, there was nobody, nobody that uh, I would have ever considered to play Amber the new Beth. You know, because I think you're very modest when you were saying about the uh, industry. I mean, you had one thing that uh, is talent and a, and a charisma and a special spirit. And uh, and also you're a uh, you know I, I was saying the other day that when you're casting somebody we don't just cast 
people for their talent. Uh, I like to cast somebody with, uh, with being good human beings. You know, I mean, it sounds really weird, but you know, somebody that, that will I know, work. I know exactly what you mean. We, um, yeah. I've done a little bit of producing myself, with theater stuff, and yeah, you do. You do have to kind of be, 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 be um, mindful of who you're bringing into the into the family, don't you? Yeah. Very important, and 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 you've always been a tremendous company person and a great ambassador for uh, for New Zealand and for uh, our profession. And and I know that uh, many of the fans around the world who had the pleasure of perhaps meeting you on the tours will attest to that. That I'm very proud of all the cast. I mean, how you handled yourself and, oh, and thanks, that, Ray. Yeah, well, we. I mean, we were given amazing opportunities. I think we. I hope we sort of. I hope we um, conveyed that we understood it at the time that we were being given, you know, <laughs> pretty yeah, remarkable yeah, experience. I think, I think, you know, it was uh, very special. And Beth, I've got some questions on our Facebook page and yeah. uh, lots of them. And, and uh, I must apologize. We just, we're the best one in the world. We're not going to be able to get through this. There's just literally hundreds of them. So I'm wow. just going to customize and random sample a few. Yeah. So one from Isabella Milne. Uh, she is asking you, what was it like to play both Amber and then Eagle for a while? Also, was there a difference between them or were they both similar? Um, oh, gosh. Now, I have to preface all of this by saying that it is quite a long time ago. So I'm going to give you as much as I can remember, but some of it is a bit vague. Um, so I think I remember that the Eagle storyline was when – that's right. That was when I came back, wasn't it, yeah, after series yeah, – right. after taking that series off. I yeah. think I kind of – I think I remember that Eagle was written slightly more stiffly than Amber, that she might have sort of um, found a place in amongst another tribe, but maybe it wasn't really truly um, where Amber wanted to be. Um, yeah. So I think I remember playing her a little bit more um, – yeah, a little bit more – Oh, what's the word? Maybe a bit more guarded. Um, yeah. And then I think when um, she kind of, when Amber sort of re-emerged and came back into the fold, that she yeah. sort of softened and obviously she, you know, was having the baby with Bray and all that. So, um, and I, but I remember actually the whole process was quite strange. And the thing that I remember the most about it is because it was quite a big gap between me finishing as Amber and then coming back as um Eagle, and it was like 18 months, I think, because you guys went and shot series two, which I didn't do. But the thing that I remember is not being able to fit my costume. (laughs) Because I obviously um, went off and, like, we went from being, like, 14 to sort of 16 and obviously, like, put on a bit of weight. But I remember them trying to put on my old um, Amber costume and it just just was not – it just didn't work. (laughs) So I think – I think actually, if you look at the flashbacks in series three, where um, we shot the sort of what happened after the explosion at the end of series one, you might even be able to see that I couldn't get my fly up on my on my pants. <laughs> that's a good. That's I'm, I bet we're going to have everybody rushing to. <laughs> in fact, we must uh, we'll edit that together and put it up on YouTube. That's <laughs> Dem- I'm, sure, I'm, I'm almost certain that I remember seeing it and going, "Oh my god, I really couldn't do those pants up." <laughs> <laughs> right, that's lovely. That uh, and Beth, a lot of the listeners might not be aware that um, the reason you didn't do series two was because of your education. So we yeah. wrote around that, and uh, we get a lot of letters say, "Why or oh, why did Beth or Amber leave?" And yeah. so it, we were thrilled to have you back. And so we we did that for all the cast. It's a bit complicated. That uh, and you know the eagle's costume, that lovely feathered costume. Yeah, for the feathers, uh, yeah. Yeah, we still have that all in storage, all the costumes, and um, and one of the most popular ones uh, is that costume that uh, that the. Oh, really? Is that funny? Is that with that corset, that leather corset? The leather corset. That's right. That, that uh, it's amazing. That uh, so I've got another one now. That um, yeah. uh, Beth. Uh, this is from Sophie Bright. Um, hi, Sophie. Thank you for your question to Beth, and it says, "Hi, Beth. Amber was such an incredible and inspiring character to watch as a young girl." I am now a mother myself. Where did Amber find her strength in such uncertain times? A lot of the scenes were quite tense. Uh, was there anything you guys did on set to keep in good spirits? <laughs> that's interesting. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, that's really. Um, do you know? I think it helps. I think it helps to have been really quite young. You know, we were kids. We were like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. By the time we were shooting, you know, the later series, series three, four, five. 
we were really good friends too by then um so it was kind of like just we were just mucking around with mates I, I mean not that we didn't take the job seriously but I think because we were young and kind of we didn't we weren't taking out we weren't taking it too seriously I think we understood that we were playing characters and that we were getting to do this fun thing with our friends and we would you know play it for the truth that it was but then we would pretty easily come out of it and have a giggle because we were 16 you know or 15 um so I think that really helped and um and I think being busy probably just kept us putting one foot in front of the other you know we had a lot of footage to get through we were shooting quite fast I think Ray. we were shooting I think I remember being you know, well, it's you know, it's pretty standard these days. But thirteen or fourteen minutes worth of footage a day, um, and I mean, I think Shortland Street's faster than that. But I haven't done anything else faster than that. So in terms, of, you know, you just had to kind of get get through it and um, know your lines well and do the scenes and then move on. And so I think there was. I mean, I remember having a lot of fun on set and having a lot of laughs, but to the point where we were we would get into trouble. <laughs> Like, it was like, you know, it's no, time. No, no. It's, it's the time. And, and that's almost, I often say, a lot of the listeners are unaware of what goes on behind the scenes. But um, all the casts, when you came to Wellington, you'd, you, we had tribe schools and uh, yeah. tutors and uh, house parents. And, um, and, um, and, and you, you, you did your schooling in the tribe classrooms, didn't you? And, I did. And then I think. After series, I think series one, I did that, and then that got a wee bit hard just because Amber was in so much of the um, so much of the series that I that was why I sort of took a break after. Well, I I dipped out after series two because I was just sort of wanting to get back into sort of normal school life in a way. Um, yeah. And then when I came back, you guys very kindly only wrote me in when I could film in my school holidays. So that was actually great because I would be at school during the terms and then come to Wellington and shoot you know it'd be really busy for two weeks and do all of my do all of my shooting and then I would go back to school so um that that was actually a really that was a really good um workaround for me that you guys made that work because I was at high school by then and um you know the, the work the school work was getting a little bit more uh serious you know needing to kind of do exams and stuff so um yeah, that was that was a really good workaround for me. That, that, that worked. That's that's great. Now, I've got another one here from. Then I hope I can pronounce the name. This is from Scylla Evangeline Grace. What a, what a wonderful, lovely name, Evangeline Grace. Mm. Um, with everything that's happening in the world now, do you find yourself looking back as your character as Amber? Do you feel like you as a person would be the same as Amber in this exact situation? Oh, I don't think I would be as competent as Amber, to be honest. I think she was really quite a, um, like a, well, she was an amazing sort of young leader. And I don't know whether, I don't, I don't actually know. We've been laughing about this a bit amongst us because all of this happened so fast. And I think, I think a lot of us in today, you know, now we've been a wee bit caught unawares. You know, I follow the news and knew what was kind of coming, but I, I didn't really foresee that we would be at home for, you know, four, six, eight weeks um, and then whatever else happens after that. I So I feel like maybe Amber would actually be better at it than me, <laughs> particularly if it came down to living in a shopping mall and having to think about our um, on our wits. Although I am reasonably good at getting people organised. So I feel like maybe even if I wasn't um, quite as um, strong and bolshy as Amber, I might be quite good at, like, organising the food runs or um, – uh, I don't know, the exercise schedule or something. I just um, – but, no, I think she was a pretty remarkable sort, that one. I think you'd want Amber around. I think if there's anybody that would get me a supply of toilet paper, it would be you. <laughs> that's true. I might be able to make some calls. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, 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 this is from Megan Boss. Did you keep anything from the Tribe sets costume to remember the show? Would you ever consider doing a Tribe remake? Um, so that's two questions there from Megan. Um, I think I did. I, I think I've got a few little keepsakes keep 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 tucked away. But I think most of the costumes, I think, got all sort of put aside by you guys, which, of course, they should have. I think I might have my, um, like, a robe somewhere, one of the robes that we used to wear on set in between takes. Um, mm. And, I mean, at this stage, I would be happy to talk about doing any kind of reunion, to be honest, because... God, we'd all look um, pretty different, wouldn't we? Like we certainly wouldn't be the spring chickens that we used to be. But um, I think yeah. you never know, Beth. There's so much um, 
you know, the tribe fan base is, is so loyal. I mean, and we've often said it. I mean, our, you know, the Cloud9 is a small independent. I mean, it's all relative. I mean, to some people, Cloud9 was a mammoth operation. But, I mean, in reality, uh, it's a small independent company. Then we, yeah. we didn't have a squillion dollar budget and it wasn't Hollywood. You know, we did the best we could with our budgets and we're punching way above our weight. But mm. I think the series, for some reason, are mostly connected. And, and you guys brought it to life, all the cast and uh, people like did, well. did it surprise you, right? Like when it when the tribe went the way that it did? Do you, do you know, it's interesting, really. I mean, I'm always an optimist, you know, and um, and I believe in anything that uh, from a writer, you know, I always believe very much in what I do. And I can see, I just believe that in a world... Uh, with young people building a better world, um, rebelling against the previous generations. And that's maybe me being an ex-hippie. I was a big fan of John Lennon, um, mm. as I keep saying. And, you know, I grew up in a time where, um, you, you know, the kind of to give peace a chance and flower power and and um, and really just trying to build a better world. And, mm. and so I believe that it might resonate uh, but no, if I'm honest, I, I, even in my wildest dreams, I, I didn't think it would uh, uh, connect as it did. And, and even to this day, I mean, it's, uh, I'm constantly humbled, as I think we all, we all are, really, that it's touched so many of uh, so many people. And, and not yeah. just it's, it's helped them, um, you know, through, uh, you know, it, it's helped people in their lives and, um, you know, through some of the storylines, I think... Um, I think it's it's very very special, really, and yeah. And um, so bear with me that I've just got one from Linda Lisa Punter. Hi Beth, Amber was a role model for me. Who was that for you? Did you have a role model, Beth, in either an actress or a person in the family or somebody um, who's been a role model? Um, <laughs> I sort of. It's funny. It's funny how. And now having kids, you sort of, I'm always wondering what's going to be the things that grabs their attention and keeps their attention. I mean, I grew up watching, because my brother and sister are much older than me, I grew up watching a lot of really of British comedy. So I grew up watching Blackadder and Mr. Bean and The Young Ones. And so I feel like maybe my appreciation for a certain kind of humour and scripts kind of comes from that. Not that I ever ended up doing any of that kind of work as an actor, but that was almost my model, like, really wry, dry, funny stuff. And then when I was in, when I was acting, I, because there wasn't, no, I don't, do you know what? I don't really remember ever seeing anyone on screen and going, I want to be like that. I kind of, what I liked doing was the acting and I liked being on set. And so yeah. that was more my focus more than sort of becoming anything, uh, becoming a vision yeah. in my head. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so. Maybe, maybe that's the, <clears throat> where being, I mean, being an artist and, and an actress that you're able to uh, maybe tap that into Amber or Princess Bar or whatever character you play. And it's interesting, Beth, because we get a lot of, um, I mean, a hell of a lot of letters from people who um, actually, uh, the character of Amber, they really model their own lives as impressionable young people on on your character, really. And um yeah, there's one girl, like I'm, I'm just searching through our Facebook. I think it was on Facebook where she modeled her life through very difficult times on Amber. And that oh. uh, almost saved her life, you know, and that strength. And, and, and I think, you know, it's interesting. It, maybe we, you know, being a strong female, a mother figure, I don't know, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, and you played it very well. Now, I've got an interesting question from Ash from Instagram on Ash. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jayan, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but it's almost the direct opposite to what we've been discussing about um, uh, anybody that, that inspired you, Beth. I mean, what did you take away as Beth from your roles that you have implemented in your everyday life? Um, was there anything in as a character, Amber, that perhaps you have uh, you know, implemented consciously, maybe subconsciously, do you think? I don't know. I think maybe I, because I would, maybe because I was so young, I just feel like I almost just did did the part and had a really great time 
and then kind of went home and was just me. I don't. I I feel like I, I I I did kind of compartmentalize that quite well. Um, and I and I and I, I could definitely. It's such a hard thing to explain, but um, I definitely felt like it was Amber was a very easy access for me. Like I never felt like I feel like she was a very. Um, uh, I could see her very clearly. You know, as soon as I started playing her, I could feel her and, and knew where she was coming from. But I didn't feel like I had to. I didn't feel like I was taking that on. I don't know whether I would have to ask like my mum and dad if they disagreed, but I um, felt like I just sort of really enjoyed myself and played her to the best that I could. And then I kind of just went back and became my normal teenage self and was sort of wrapped up in all those kind of concerns. So I don't know whether I don't know whether I could say that I did sort of take her home with me in a way. Um, yeah. It's good to be able to compartmentalise, as you say, otherwise it's... Uh, it's very difficult. I mean, I, I find that when I'm writing, I mean, um, it, it's a very bizarre thing. Some of the characters become real and it's very bloody weird, particularly when you're writing female or different or, um, you know, I've, one of my novels, it was a terrorist story and, and very dark. I can actually really understand how that would happen. And I've, I've also had really funny conversations with writers who've written for, say, Shortland Street for a long time and how if you've had a character on the screen for a long time and you've been writing them for a long time, you can almost never ever see the actor as anything except the person as, a, as the character. So even mm -hmm. though you know that you, you know that you write it, that it's a creation, you, you actually find it just as hard as the viewers to step away from the fact that the character and the actor are different. I, yeah, I totally, I totally get that. But I think, I think maybe the blessing with Amber is that she was, um, very capable and strong. So she was, oh, you've got some friends there, right? Yeah, I've got some. <laughs> um, um, uh, we, I'm, I'm, uh, luckily, we've got some amazing wildlife here that, uh, as I say, I'm looking out to kangaroos literally at the bottom of their garden. Oh, and we've what? got some amazing parrots and uh, cockatoos and lorikeets oh. and, and that other bird. I don't know what kind, but it's, uh, it's got a beautiful, beautiful uh, Beautiful singing voice. So uh, you, you pick it up, and if any of our listeners can hear it, it's uh, <laughs> it's quite amazing that. Uh, um, I've got a fun question here from Donna Feet. If you could be a superhero, who would you be and why? Oh wow! Um, oh, now who do I like? I'm just trying to think of the X Men who always. I think Wolverine's quite cool. I quite like him. I just yeah. think you know being able to be a badass, like. Yeah. <laughs> And just be, you know, super scary, but super nice guy as well underneath all that rugged exterior. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, good, that's fun. That. Now, one from Amanda Engelblum, I think it is Engelblum. Uh, your best memory of the, from the show, Beth, do you have a, anything that sticks out? Or? Oh, just so many. Um, mostly I just remember the afternoons where we would – you know, we would be shooting long days and then it would get to the afternoons and we were young and we would just, we would just laugh. I can remember being on set with Tori and Antonia and Michael and, and just actually not being able to keep ourselves together because we would like lose the plot about something and just end up in fits of giggles. That's what I can remember is just um, having a lot of, yeah, having a lot of really fun times with nice kids on, on set. Um, and then, and then the travel. Actually, the travel that we did when I, we were a bit older, and went and promoted the show, and we just got to go to these. You know, we went to a, we went to like, I, don't, I think I went to eight countries in five weeks or something, um, okay. and you know, got to sort of be out there traveling when you're 18 and um, with your mates and staying, you know, but but also working and staying in nice hotels and having a lovely time. <laughs> it was a really good experience. I mean, uh, when we were chatting with Danny found it a bit bizarre to um, be out there and to arrive at an airport and uh, to be signing autographs and people recognizing him. Where in New Zealand, of course, he'd come back and nobody would know who he was. And it was a bit of a, a, a uh, weird, did that affect you a similar way? Did you find it a bit strange to? Um, I think I kind of found that sort of, um, when I did Shortland Street, which is, you know, it's quite a, it's a popular show here. Um, that was when I sort of found the the recognizability stuff happening. Yeah. Um, and actually, I was pleased that I didn't have that when I was young. I think that would have been quite hard to deal with. Um, 
um, yeah, so I was actually, I think that was a real blessing that we were pretty anonymous with it um, in New Zealand and then, you know, had these amazing experiences of walking into airports with a thousand kids screaming at you. But it was, but then you could kind of, we could just sort of escape from it and go back to normal life. I think probably any famous person would say that that's exactly yeah. what they wish would happen. <laughs> you know, yeah. that you'd go out and have it in some countries and not in others. <laughs> and with Salton Street, Beth, that's a very big series in many parts of the world as well. And, and obviously an iconic series in uh, New Zealand. That How long were you in Shortland Street for? I did six years on Shortland Street, um, which kind of flew by, to be honest. I played it, and I played such a different character to Amber. I played um, a femme fatale doctor who was not a very good doctor but really wanted to climb social and um, uh, professional ladders. So she was um, a bit ruthless but kind of ineptly ruthless because she kept sort of – Stand, like getting in her own way with it so she was the absolute opposite to Amber and so much fun to play um, okay. and she sort of almost ended up being a bit of a, a comic character because she would try and do these complicated schemes about how she was going to get the next boyfriend or the next um, job promotion and she'd always stuff it up so that, it was, that's, it was that's different, different and a lot of fun that, that's great that, that, uh, but I've just got a, a one from Octopus is it that uh, bear with me uh, so my best friend uh, and I are from Ireland, and the series has played a big part in our friendship. So we're going to get tribe-themed tattoos. Um, oh, wow. Amber was always my favorite character, so mine will be based around her. Any thoughts on what I should get? Oh, my face on your back, like a huge <laughs> picture of my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I... I, I you know what? I think tattoos are absolutely all your own um, own thing. I've got a I've got a tattoo, and it was and it's my own um, story. So I think you should do whatever you feel is right because you're the one who's going to have it. <laughs> but my face would be amazing, and send me a photo of that. <laughs> no, that's lovely. That. Now we got one from theatre fan in Oz. And um, how does the current situation feel when you have already acted it twenty years ago? <laughs> Well, um, thankfully a little less dire than when we were acting it 20 years ago because um, we're not having to steal food or maraud around in gangs of teenagers. Um, we It's all feeling pretty organised down here, to be honest. Um, we are thankful that our governments acted pretty swiftly and pretty um, sensibly. And for the most part, everyone's obeying the rules and kind of doing their bit. So it feels like hopefully we will avoid a tribe situation where um, we will kind of do the things that we need to do as a as a um, country to uh, eradicate it, eradicate the virus from our shores as much as we can and then kind of wait for a vaccine, really, which is, seems to be on the cards but definitely isn't going to be in the next six to 12 months, is it? That's what they're saying. Um, so, yeah, I think, it, yeah, it feels, it, it, yeah, I, I must say I have thought about the tribe a lot more in the last few weeks. Oh, I'm just about to be interrupted by my little one. Hello. Yeah. Is that Nell? Hello, Nell. It's Ray. Do you want to say hi, Ray? Hi. Are you watching television? Are you watching? Uh, what What do you want to watch, Nelly? Uh, train. You want to watch the train? Oh, the dinosaur train. Okay, oh, I'll be right back, Ray. I'll change it to dinosaur train. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can just imagine, Ray, how it is for people with kids working from home at the moment. Like, I don't have to work. And <laughs> can you imagine it? Just trying to get anything done when you've got... You know, it, it's quite interesting because I, as a writer, um, uh, when I first married, you know, the, all these uh, over 50 years ago, and the kids started to come along, um, yeah. and my wife always used to joke <clears throat> that the first words they spoke was, shush, daddy's working, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I'm used to it, actually. I mean, I'm totally, and um, mm. so I had that all my career, and when the kids were young and I'd be writing and they'd come and interrupt and it became, I got kind of used to it. Then of course the grandchildren would come around. And so I've, I'm, I'm, uh, it, it's, it's kind of normal really, but as you say, it must be quite different when you're thrown into a different, uh, a different dimension, isn't it? Of being a parent when you're with, with them all day and every day. And it's, uh, it is, it's very difficult. It's uh, not easy. And, it's very, actually, the nice, the nice thing about it, though, is um, I was just talking about it with my mum this morning, is that actually all the pressure's off. Like, even though I'm a stay-at-home mum, there's always something that we're doing. You know, we're going to, we're getting out of the house to go to kindy or then we're 
going to a play group or we're going to catch up with so-and-so or we've got to go and do the grocery shopping. And it's all very, you know, domestic and not hard, but you you do end up sort of saying, no, no, we can't do that right now, babe. We've got to go and do this. Or we've got to finish this now or we can't do that anymore. And actually it's really nice at the moment because we can just say, yep, we can kick that ball around the park for 40 minutes if you want to and then we can play hide and seek. And, like, it's all the pressure's off and it's actually – it's actually really nice. Mind you, we are only on day five. I'm not sure how I will feel after 21 or 28. Yeah. Or 20. There's one that's an interesting um, um, an interesting one because you mentioned about the government and mm. um, I think Jacinta is doing a very interesting job in New Zealand and through yeah. this difficult time. So, but this is one from Emma. During my childhood years, watching the tribe, Amber was an inspiration to me as a leader and a strong woman to look up to. Are there any inspirational women you are influenced by today? Oh, well, isn't that timely? Friend? Absolutely, yeah. Jacinda. I think um, uh, I, I think when she came when she came into power, a, a girlfriend of mine said to me, "I think it, <laughs> I think I know what it feels like to be a white man now because there's oh. like there's someone in charge who looks like us, and I can see why you get used to this." <laughs> <laughs> um, she's only she's only a couple of years older than us she's 30 she's only 40 or something and then you know she and her daughter was born almost around the same time as my Nell yeah. um and she's you know she's out there talking about being kind to each other and um you know getting she they had this great press conference the other day where one of the journalists said um that they're hearing from people whose landlords have tried to put the rent up while we've been in you know in lockdown yeah. Yes. And she personally said, "Give me that. Give me that. Um, the print out of that email. I'll be following that up personally." Like she's out there, really at the front, being a really empathetic, kind person. And I think yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm finding her really inspirational at the moment. Yeah, um, I think she's a remarkable lady, really. And I mean, yeah. with her Christchurch uh, tragedy, she really yeah. shone like a, a light, really, to g guide the nation and the world through that in a very yeah. inspirational way. And uh, and you know, Beth, I mean, we're talking about mums and you chatting with your mum and um, I'm me thinking about my own mother, bless her. I mean, um, you know, I think mothers are the anchor of families, obviously. And, um, and there's something really, and I think probably Amber, uh, you know, was the mother of the tribe, really. I mean, the, the leader, the organiser, the one that would do as you do with, with uh, Nellie and Sid, you know, if you're saying we're going to do this, we're going to kick the ball around the park. It's organising and and having that compassion and that love and that care and and as indeed you're doing today. I mean, it's it's lovely and very touching for me to see you, you know, go off and look after uh, Nelly. And it's lovely to hear her voice, uh, uh, what she's needing from you. And uh, and um, so yeah, I mean, it's. I think every uh, motherhood is is really inspires me as a man i have to tell you that uh, see my own wife and my daughter as a mother and i mm. think it's the anchor really and um and perhaps there's something i mean i don't mean to be sexist in any way but i think jacinta um brings that kind of i don't know it's, uh, she's the mother of a nation i mean I, it's weird you know just at this time yeah. and i've been reading i've been reading a bit about her and how it's interesting that we sort of assign these um uh her, you, the sort of the, the traits that she's displaying like kindness and compassion yeah. and empathy and we've decided that those are female traits but actually yeah. you know, i know lots of men with those sorts of traits but we just don't seem to see it in our leaders all that much we um and particularly yeah. not some of the leaders at the moment um but for some reason we've just sort of accepted that that's what a leader has to be, you know, not those things. And no, agree, and agree, actually yeah. you, can, you can lead very, very well displaying, you know, stereotypically female traits. It's, um, no, right. yeah. Really cool. And that's really the thing, cool. is, uh, segueing back to the tribe, in the mm. writers, things, Harry and the writers, and <clears throat> particularly myself, I always wanted to, um, you know, uh, again, with the theme of young people building a better world to, to not be stereotypical and to have, and that's why we explored a lot of, all the characters would, uh, were a bit, the male characters were a bit multidimensional, would express mm. their feelings, talk about their feelings. Mm. Um, and that, 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 and it was always, rather than post-apocalyptic and dystopian, you know, it was very positive, it was full of hope and, 
uh, you know, and, and, and really celebrating whether you call it a tribe or a family or, um, you know, human love, really. And uh, Yeah, and isn't that, that interesting that if that's what you, as you say, if it's you intended to go yeah. against the grain a little bit stereotypically, I wonder if that's why some of these characters like Amber really found an audience because – I don't know, Ray, but was there much around like that in terms of, you know, strong? Not really. I mean, it's um, in, in those days, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, I, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of lowest uh, common denominator, what I call cratty chop television. Nothing wrong with Power Rangers and that type of thing, but um, there's a lot of special effects and gadgets and gimmicks. And, you know, for me, what works better is human drama where we can explore all those themes of social justice, self-reliance, I mean, the judiciary system, even spirituality through the Guardian or rebellion mm -hmm. through Zoot, you know, mm -hmm. where we, and maybe, uh, you know, if we could really, again, you never know, but the fans would know better, I suppose, why, but it certainly touched them in a, like no other series I've ever been involved with. And, you know, yeah, it's not me. Yeah. No, it's just, um, and maybe that, because it is, you know, and even for the fans now themselves of parents and, and you for Sid and, and, and for Nelly to what world will they inhabit? And, and, um, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, uh, and also, and also like, what are they, what are they consuming too? Like that's, that's, that's interesting yeah. as a parent, you know, at the moment it's all cartoons, but in a few yeah. years time, there's going to be different kinds of no. content. So I, I, yeah. I kind of also wonder what it was like for the parents of the kids who are watching the tribe and like, and it, and it, and it might've been a really useful way to have, you know, conversations about difficult topics. You know, like all of those things that were kind of taboo and, you know, we, we kind of, uh, yeah, push the boundaries a bit and push yeah. the envelope. And, uh, and I think we did it best with, you know, and that's where I'm proud of all the, the cast and crew with passion and integrity and, and, um, and, and sincerity really. I mean, it was something that we did and, and and I'm as I say I think that it's something I'm very proud of. And, uh, and yeah, I mean it's a, it's a, it's sort of it's funny, isn't it? Particularly because a lot of us have gone off and done other things with our lives. Is yeah. like for me now. I mean, I was you know I I acted for for I was lucky enough to act for a long time after um, I did the tribe. But and now my life is so different. You know, it's so domestic and kind of looking after kids that yeah. um, it's such a it's such a like a crazy. It's, it gets it gets crazier for me the longer I get away from it. Like. When yeah. I now meet people, they don't meet me as an actor. They meet me as a mum. And so when yeah. someone – actually, now when someone stumbles across the tribe, on it's on Lightbox over here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll say, oh, my God, my kids started watching this series and you, you're on it and you're so young. And it's such yeah. a uniquely – almost a New Zealand experience, like having done something like that and it's on the telly. Yeah. And you, then you kind of can quietly kind of retreat into a different life quite easily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so it's yeah, it's a really it's a great story around the um, around the dinner table for people that you're getting to know. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That, well, Beth, I appreciate you taking the time, and I'm sure that all it your was fans, really nice. It was really nice thinking about all those times, actually, and kind of yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you don't don't day to day, you get into your own bubble, and yeah, it's and, been great to talk to you. I mean, today. It's interesting. A lot of the tribe fans and were always asking, will there be a reunion? And I was going to yeah. do something on the vineyard to get everybody together after 20 years and ironically uh, who would have thought that we'd be uh, living uh, this life now after uh, on the 20th anniversary but Beth is there anything in closing you'd like to say to the tribe fans uh, at this point? No, I think I think um I, I think just know that we um even if we don't I, even if I'm not I mean I'm not I'm not particularly present on social media because that um I, I'm, I'm a bit I'm a bit more sort of private than that I think um but I do sort of key into it occasionally and and it's i mean it just blows it just keeps blowing me away how um how people seem to people do find meaning and value and stuff in it that you know that all these years later and um so we do i do really love seeing it all and um yeah and just i guess to you ray just want to thank you for you know the what a fantastic teen years that you gave us by giving well, us the opportunity to work the way that we did. We, um, yeah, we were really lucky. So, yeah, it's well, been really nice to connect. Very, very good of you to say, Beth. And, um, you know, I was uh, reflect, reflecting this morning um, uh, on the, the uh, interesting with the eco-tribe and eagle, you know, where I'm a big fan of the Gaian hypothesis, which oh, is yes. 
an evolutionary um, element where we evolve, we adapt, we and um, possibly this is a good leveler in in a positive uh -huh. way. Uh, uh, yeah. I think that maybe in this fast-paced material world that we um, have forgotten about Mother Earth and the natural world and and what is of true value and that's you know to like Jacinta says love each other care about each other look out for each other and embrace what is true value and um and that's family and uh, for the future i mean the environment and all that that entails and and so maybe out of this can come some good and some uh, and that yeah. we should all, you know uh, i think we all share the same message to the fans to stay safe and to yeah, Don't get <laughs> if, you need, uh, if, you, if you're being told to stay inside, please stay inside. <laughs> that's right. That's very important. And, uh, and, and, and just have both. Don't ever give up and do yeah. take it one day at a time and <clears throat> don't let your those that are feeling a bit anxious. It's understandable. We are, we are talking about that a lot amongst our, you know, our little, our family and our kind of the families around us that we, you know, we really, we are worried and we are, but we also just, forcing ourselves to just thinking what are we ha what are we doing today what are we going to do today that makes us feel like we're um connected and happy and keeping the kids um you know in a positive frame of mind and and that's sort of all we can do today because there is a lot of unknowns and yeah. and I think one of the things for me has been a great um experience is watching watching everyone around us also just figuring it out that you know that while we often look to the media or politicians or whatever to have all the answers you know there is some really great leadership happening but they are also saying to us this is what we think we can do and it, it relies on all of us as a group to do our bit and after that we have to just wait and see and and hope for the best um and so that's been i've really enjoyed that 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 kind of um community and the community feel and we're actually all in this together and we are all all just having to hope for the best it is a collective consciousness and yeah. You know, we're across the world and uh, you know together we can all get through it and yeah. well Beth thank you very very much my dear it's lovely yeah. to love to lovely to catch up and speak and uh, uh, thank you for on behalf of all the tribe world uh, your fan base for taking the time and um, and I'm sorry awesome. we didn't get to, to all the questions but uh, there's another day so onwards and upwards and as we say hey, Beth keep the dream alive everybody and uh, just take it as best of one day at a time and all will be well, I'm sure, you know. That's right. Thanks, Ray. And lots of love to you and thank you. And um, you look after Don't go to the supermarket you. unless you have to. Yeah, okay. That's for sure. That's right. I'll, I'll get those color rolls, yeah. <laughs>